Hey everybody, wanted to come back with another short series of videos from God's Word, and this time I want to be looking at a passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now I want to address something that's been kind of happening recently with these issues with the coronavirus and the things that are going on around the world where people are beginning to make more and more claims that this is the end. These are the end times. And I want to talk about that for a minute because I do think it's true that we are closer today to Jesus return than we've ever been before. And you can kind of hear the humor in that statement. Of course, we're closer today than we've ever been before because all of that is in the past. But I don't necessarily think it's responsible for us to say these are the end times. And we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians 5 to see why that is the case and then to get some insight into how we should live. So in 1 Thessalonians, all the people were really worried because they were afraid that their loved ones who had died were going to miss the return of Christ. And so Paul writes to reassure them that they don't need to fear, but they in fact have hope, and that those who are dead in Christ will also rise when Christ returns. And so that's the context that we get into in chapter 5. And Paul starts in chapter 5, by saying, oops, turn the page just a minute. Paul starts in chapter five by saying, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you, meaning you're already familiar with, with the times and the seasons that are going to precede Christ's return. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, while people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and, there, and they will not escape. So Paul's saying, you don't need to be worried about the return of Christ taking you by surprise. Because the things that are going to precede that, you know what they are. And so as they happen, it's not going to take you by surprise. Instead, you'll be aware that the time is drawing nearer. But people who are not looking forward to the return of Christ, they're not going to notice that these things are preceding his return, but instead they're going to surprise them and they're not going to be able to escape and they're going to be in fear. Now, when we consider when Paul was writing this, he wrote this 2000 years ago. So, so he wasn't saying Jesus is returning now and you're going to know it and nobody else is going to know it. Instead, he's saying just pay attention to what's going on around you and know what Christ has said about the things that would happen that would precede his return. And we're living in the very same situation. We know that Christ said that things would get harder as things drew near to his return. But that doesn't mean he's coming back today or tomorrow. It just means we're closer now than we've ever been. So what is Paul's admonishment to the church in Thessalonica? He says, beginning in verse Five, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober. What does sober mean? It means be alert, pay attention. Don't get lulled into the same way of thinking as everybody else and don't get lazy in this time, but instead live intentionally for Jesus, knowing that we are closer today than we've ever been before to his return. And as we draw closer to Jesus' return, we want to be intentional with the time he's given us. So let me ask you, how are you using your time right now? You have time at home that you otherwise wouldn't have had at home and, and while many of us are working from home, many of us have also found greater flexibility with our time at home. And so how are you using that time? Are you investing in your family? Are you investing in growing in your relationship with God and in following him in your home? Are you investing in what you know and in your, in your intellect? Are you reading books? Are you trying to learn or are you just wasting time because you don't know anything better to do? Let's be sober. Let's be focused. Let's be intentional. And Paul goes on and he tells us exactly what it looks like to be sober because he says, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. We should wake up every day 
putting on the very articles of our hope and salvation, and that is Christ himself. And I put my faith in Christ. I have my hope in Christ, and my salvation is in Christ. You see, when Paul uses this armor of God imagery, both here and in Ephesians chapter 6, he's really talking about not something that we do, but something that Christ is for us. And so the way that we remain sober is being rooted in who Christ is as we live today. And Paul concludes this section by saying, For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Friends, we have nothing to fear. No matter what may be in the future, we don't have to be afraid of it. Sure, the economy could recover, but there's just going to be something else that comes later down the road. We have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, knowing that God has secured salvation for us in him and that no matter what we face, he will hold us fast. And so in the midst of that, let's be an encouragement to one another. Let's encourage one another to not live in fear. Let's encourage one another to be sober-minded and focused and intentional with our time. And let's see what God does in our midst.